<laughs> Tim, we'll excuse you from getting up for the pledge of allegiance. Okay. Please stand. <laughs> pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So you'll be pleased to know that um, I, I asked John Gifford and I asked Kyle Barnett if we could have that young gentleman there, for our representative from Vanderbilt, and they agreed. So okay. Joe is going to be our man. Uh, we're we're uh, delighted uh, to have you. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, John. Thank you, Joe. It's funny, but I'm sorry about no worries. It's sort of okay. Out. Is that in that executive session that any need for him to be here or no? No, Joe had offered to have the executive session prior to this meeting, but um, in reviewing what's going to be presented, there'll probably be more questions that will arise from other council people that we can record and then forward it on to Joe, okay. and then he All can right. do his research and get back to us. Okay. That way, you have to leave at what time? Seven. seven. Okay. Yeah. And. and um, yeah, and that's probably best anyway. That way, um, even if I was in the executive session, I'd be speaking kind of extemporaneously right. on whatever the questions were. So, let me know the questions were. Yeah, right. we'll do that. Okay, just um, before we actually get into the, the schedule, um, in the last month or so, uh, we've lost three community members that have had a big impact on, on, on this village and town. Um, Andy Doro, uh, you know, he was in Vietnam, same time I was there, he was wounded very seriously and it took him a year to, to get back on his feet. He got back involved in the village, um, VFW life member on the ZBA in the village for a while. Dave McDonald, he was on the town board for 30, how many years? I took his place. Yeah. Um, and, Stan, and, and Stan Morse. Oh, yeah, Stan. Uh, yeah, you know, he was a local businessman, a Vietnam veteran. Um, you know, that was a big hit that we took there in that short period of time. So I just thought we could have a moment of silence just to recognize those three gentlemen. Okay, thanks. Okay. So, Joe, let's put you on. Okay. Um, writing is done. Other collaborated. Um, obviously, we did the votes for the um, for the race mm -hmm. marathon early. Go back and finish the rest of them. They're in decent shape. Money will be at them soon, but uh, we'll look good. So we'll get to mowing next. Uh, also, we'll be doing a, a lot of black topping as far as potholes and such on some of these roads. Um, my roads are going to be somewhat. I had one or two black top, Jameson Hill Road, and the Tyrells which is one road that separated myself from. And Jamison Hill has become a pass-through now because of the bridge work being done on Salt Point Turnpike. Even though the county is trying to divert them a different way, people are wiser than that. And they're using this road and it's very busy. So I may rethink it. I don't know yet. Um, I'll let you know when it comes to it. Mm. When's that bridge going to be done? Which bridge? The when, top point. I, do, I have no idea about that bridge. This one down here is October. Yeah. I got a call and find out if I jumped to South Road and started that. I, I got to find out when the bridge is construction is going to start on Burbank Road, which is 100 yards away. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have a lot of traffic there. So well, I may choose a different road. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I would like uh, a motion, if you will, to uh, go out to bid for a dump truck. Um, we are 
Only two left. Um, one's about my age. Uh, 29. <laughs> <laughs> but it's no hope. Um, and it's holding up, but um, sometimes not so much. So with two left, usually we had three. I don't think we need three. I think the two will suffice because we have a dump sander that we can, you know, use uh, in case we need it. And we have those two smaller dumps that we bought, which are effective. So, um, so if the, you would, the one you need is a big one, a little one? Yes, I need one of the big ones because, um, I mean, we haul all the time. All the time. But, uh, there are some issues as far as when I can get these trucks. Um, as you know, we're a year out already for a small dump truck, 3,500, hmm. uh, counting. Um, if this thing looks like I'm going to wait a year and a half, year, year and a half, we, we might want to think, and I will come back to you, about um, a used one. There are a lot of them. They're in real good shape because people buy them, they use them, they go out of business, they trade them in, um, whatever. You're talking about the small dump? No, I'm not talking about it. Oh. It'd be half the price and, you know, 1,500,000 miles, that's nothing for us. So, you're still, in mind. you're still waiting on a small one? Yes, I did. You, we went out to bid for that. We went out to bid for that. So a year ago, this last month. So how does that stand with, like, why are we still, like. Because we opted to stick with it. They, they had canceled, GM had canceled their participation in the bid. Um, yeah. Remember I told you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason. Um, but, uh, so we, but we opted to stay with it. I was going to go out and try to find one. Okay. And uh, so it's it's due in July. Okay. It was due in last July, but it's now due this July. So we'll see. Um, gas tank, 4,000 gallon gas tank. I quickly read through our disaster preparedness plan. I don't see that listed as a necessity. Um, it certainly isn't one to me. I keep 500 gallons a year in it. It condensates the interstitial tank, which is the tank that is wrapped around the one that holds the product. Is constantly it condensates. It constantly fills with oil. Um, I could easily get away with a 500 or 550 gas tank. I got some prices. One was. Uh, $41,957. For a 500 gallon tank? To remove the 4,000 gallon tank and to install a 500 gallon at a pump. Jeez. I got another price and it was uh, 12,000 bucks. How much? 12,000. 12,000. Wow. Well, can't we, can't we leave the tank? I'm just throwing it out there. You can't we leave the tank there and <laughs> put the 500 gallon anyway, in the next one? We get, don't want to leave it. I'm going to get one more just to justify the 10,000, uh, 12,000, but I, I know it's it's good because I read some of the tanks. Okay. So it's not that much. And who, who, Joe, who are you asking? Propane companies? Or who's no, these are, these are um, uh, companies that actually. Also take care of your all of your uh, tanks. Uh, make sure you're um, make sure you're uh, not in violation with the DEC for um, you have any violations. For example, uh, you know so a bad paint job can be a violation. Right. The wrong sticker on the tank can be a violation. So uh, and I'm working on that so that next year all of that stuff is done up to speed. Can we use that gas tank for a culvert? Huh? Cut the ends off? No laugh. No laugh. There is there was a couple down in uh, down in Union. And after about 50 years they finally failed. Hmm. But they did use it. But no, it would <laughs> use excavation companies that'll buy those from I, I, I put it in their hands. They have to give me a bill of lading. I, I you yeah. need to know where it's going. Yeah, it has yeah. to go through all the process. Yeah, it has to be cleaned. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I do have the money, uh, not for the 41,000. I do have the money uh, through um, the FEMA reimbursement. So you have to no use that before to, the end of the year, right? What's that? You have to use it by the oh FEMA. No, FEMA. I'm talking, yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, the money I'll use. I'll use. I'm going to try to pay off that truck, that new truck with ARPA money and the FEMA money and some salt money from the village if she'll give it to me. <laughs> um, but, Basically, where it sits is in your fund. Yes. So it'd yes. be. But I'll come to you for that. Yeah. Any expenditures like that, I'll let you know and uh, see if we can't do it at the end of the year. You want to vote for the gas tank, or I just need well, if he uh, has the money in the budget, it's up to him. Right? Yeah, right. Well, I do. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, we like we need to go out to bed then. Yeah. And what I, yeah, what I just need from you is uh, if you could uh, um, motion to uh, uh, allow me to go out to bid for this stock. Okay. And then sure. I'll get back to you with the bids and all that stuff, and we'll see what the time is. So I'll make that motion. So I'll second it. All in favor? All right. You got it. And that's all I got. So yeah. while we're at it, Joe, can can we just um, go ahead and uh, do this killing road? Did everybody get a chance? Yeah, did everybody get a chance to mm -hmm. go over that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I just make a motion for Gary to sign the supplemental agreement for Colliers to make their June fifth presentation. Uh, they give us a lump sum fee of twenty two hundred dollars. Yep. Anybody second? Second. Second. All right. All right. So that's done, Joe. All set. Yep. Questions? No, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Joe. That's a you have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about uh, this? Got to be signed too, right? Thing. That's the same thing. That's oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Just copies. Yeah. Okay. This is the original one. Okay. So I will give this back to Captain. <laughs> You want to give Jonathan's report, Bob? Yeah, Jonathan couldn't be here tonight, so I told him I'd read his report. <clears throat> Building and zoning report. In the month of April, uh, 28 inspections and site visits, site visits were conducted. 24 building permits were issued and one building permit was renewed. In the month of April, three certificates of occupancy were issued and eight certificates of compliance were issued. At the end of April, there were four expired building permits. There are five cases of fire inspections being overdue or having failed previous inspections. One new building complaint was received in April for excavation work being done without a permit. Upon investigation and a meeting with the homeowner, it was found that the work being done was exempt from requiring a permit. Notices uh, for known short-term rentals were sent out. Three residents have reached out to the building department to begin the permit process. The Accessor's Office sent the parcel data information to Granicus, but we haven't heard back from them yet. <clears throat> Zoning. The month of April, five municipal searches were requested and completed. Three site visits were conducted in April. One zoning-only complaint was received in April for a property that has already been notified of violations of the zoning code. The resident is currently correcting them to bring the property into compliance. Um, they will be notified that once in compliance, they will need to maintain in compliance or face harsher actions and penalties. And that's Jonathan's report. I did okay. speak to him and he said there was no big issues going on. Everything yeah. is good. He's doing, he's doing a good job. Everything's going yep. smoothly, he said, so far. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Danielle. Um, I had my recognition meeting last night. Uh, three commissioners were in attendance along with my person <coughs> and myself. Um, we talked about the following. Uh, the CDBG grant, we're still waiting on the contract with the county. Mm -hmm. 
um, the DASNY grant, um, once the check is signed, then it will um, get overnighted to them. And then um, composting toilet will begin being prepared. So um, that takes about 14 weeks, so we're looking at late August. Should I put that on? Gary, are you up to, do you sign the check tomorrow? Sure. Prepare the check tomorrow. Oh, sure. prepare. Anytime. Okay. Let me know when it's ready. Yep. Okay. For camp every year, our families are asking for longer days. So um, we have five extra camps after camp that they can take advantage of, two of which are already full. So that's working. Um, we're sending flyers out to the school. We have flyers to the library. Um, we have them at some of the churches. We have them here for people to see what we're offering. Um, the seniors have three trips that we're offering, one of which it has to have registration by next week in order to have signed up. That's to Bill Roma. Uh, and that is scheduled for June 18th. Small Circle of Friends, our toddler program is half full, over half full for next year already. So that's looking good. Staffing for summer, Tyler Barrow, our, our camp director, has almost completed the interviews of uh, applications that she has now. Uh, we're still looking for lifeguards. Um, mm. So if anybody knows anybody that wants to be a lifeguard, which application is not yet. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Gary. <laughs> we had our first bear sighting at the park. So I have purchased some signs and we're going to put those up to let people know. They do exist, but <laughs> usually when there's noise, they don't show, but yeah. they have been there uh, in the evenings with the light bars. Yeah. Huh. Um, they I, have been there? They? There's more than one? Last year, it was the mother and the two cubs. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I explain why you have trouble getting applications for light bars. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Holy okay. Okay. Good point. I take that all back. <laughs> <laughs> Park and pool updates. Matt is working really hard on draining the pool, and he's got things going. It's, it's really getting down there. I don't know if you've driven past there, but almost all the water's out, and he has scheduled for more cleaning for next week, and sand is going to be delivered next week, and he hopes everything will be ready for Memorial Day. Awesome. Oh, excuse me, Danielle. Did he, uh, did he hook up with uh, Brian Houston? I don't know. He didn't tell me that he did, so I'm assuming no. He what? He, he didn't tell me that he didn't. Usually he's really good about letting me know. So okay. uh, Would you just follow sure. that up and make sure that they connect it? Sure. Please. Yeah, I spoke to Brian. He happened to be at the planning board meeting and told him to expect a call because we did that survey. Yeah. yeah. I asked him to call Matt. Yeah. So. We got to connect. All right. I asked Matt to be. In a spot where he could get phone calls yesterday when he called me. So okay. he sure that. And just again, um, the concession stand, I saw the menu for it, and it looks like a really good menu that everybody would be happy with. Anybody that um, is looking for something healthy or not healthy, it's all in this menu. So <laughs> good. take advantage of it. Not <laughs> so, what, um, Danielle, what's going on with the scepter? Uh, so, the um, the motors that we had that we had to replace yeah. were two months out. So the septic guy is moaning us his and that it's in there. Okay. And it's ready. So the piping was put into the drywall. And it's to the drywall. And then, but and then in the fall, the new stuff. Did we get prices and all that for the new? We're or? still working with an engineer. Okay. And he's asking for the survey for it. So okay. It's a new right. process. Okay. Thank you. You know, I was doing some lifeguard recruiting, um, and a question was asked me if we'd be providing training to these certified people that were certified for last year. Uh, Would we be providing Yes, it? or are we providing any of the, of the like recertification training? No, but we will pay back at the end if they stay working with us for the season. Okay, and do we help them like find a place where they can get recertified or? So Seattle so Bridge, Blue Bridge is doing recertification right now. All of their um, life learning classes are full. So anyone that's asked me has tried to get in there somewhere on the waiting list already. Okay. Is that an obstacle to us getting 
those guards, like the people that are trying to get recertified? Not really. Okay. So I'll just, I can, I'll just refer them to you and figure That's right. Okay. I'll, and I can tell you who they are. I'll mm -hmm. text you. Okay. Hey, Gary, I just want to ask, um, I know I communicated with you, I could make a request to use the gym, you know, which we shut down. I think you said you also. So my question is, is the, is the record department interested at all in managing an operation for the gym? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was going to be in my report. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I contacted Peter and expressed to him that Danielle and I have been talking about perhaps offering some programs and going back to our meeting that we had where we, okay. we kind of brainstormed about maybe possible uh, hourly rates. Uh, Peter said he was going to bring that up to you and perhaps the, the village board. Um, we would like to know if there are going to be hourly rates so that when Danielle offers a program like perhaps pickleball indoors during the non-heating period of the spring or volleyball, we can advertise a fee for use that will cover the rent that you're going to charge. So if you could discuss that and maybe come back to us, we, we would be interested in advertising to the public programs. Okay. But we can't do that until we know if there's going to be an arrangement. So what we want, though, is um, we don't want to make any money on it, right? And so, for the, for example, no heat's being used. Correct. Right? All I really want is someone to manage, put people in, lock, lock it up, make sure it's, you know, and that's what Danielle and I talked so, so about. So as far as the cost, I'd rather you take the lead on the cost. And in other words, if it's in the non-heating season. To tell you what we would like to rent it And for. the cost of, of the lights is minimal. You know, I'd rather you so just we'll say talk. what you want. We'll talk. Okay, because okay. I really don't want to make okay. any money on it. No, no, no. As we discussed before. Right. And as long as we don't heat it, it's exactly. the major cost. And that's what I said to Peter. I said, this is now non-heating months. Yeah. So what would the village... And I've had people come to me in the winter and say, if we don't turn the heat on, yeah. well, that's okay with me to tell you the truth. Um, you know? So Danielle and I will talk a little okay, bit. Okay, fine. Yeah. I'd like you to take the lead, just tell us what you were doing. Okay. I'm not interested in adding a you know, village fee on top of it. I'm, like, I'm interested in getting them open. Okay, great. As long as someone there is to manage, that's what I'm... And we need it. Well, we want to monitor who's in there. Absolutely. And that's what we need to discuss whether it's. We have to have insurance or whatever else. And that would be under our record. But we want to talk about is it daytime while you guys are there or is it the early evening? We need to talk about that. <laughs> okay, fine. If you take the lead, I'm more than happy to work with you. Okay, great. Thanks, Tim. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Good. That helps. Part of that report. <laughs> good. Okay. good. 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 Lisa, you're here somewhere. Where are you? You want to, you want to give your report? <laughs> Nothing special at this time. We were just busy, like finished the tentative role, got that um, finished, signed off on. The books are available. If anybody wants to look at it, it's online. The county also, it's on our website, giving all the information relative to grievance, which is the Tuesday after Memorial Day, which is kind of a bummer, but yep. it is what it is. And uh, yeah, we will have it here in person. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, we're just working on playing some catch up and, and figuring out the part of summer what we're going to work, you know, different things we have kind of planned. Yeah. Good. Other questions? Uh, yes. Lisa, uh, Jonathan made a report that he has heard from some short term rental people as as a result of us sending out letters and that Granicus and you have been in communication. How did that work out? When you and I first talked, you said that what they were requiring from the assessor's office looked to be very cumbersome. It's done. It's but been done for a little while. I, I did spend, it took me about two days to get through it. But do you, you, you talked to the representative, the dark I team member? I, I sent it to Jonathan. I didn't need to speak to them. I okay. gave them the information they needed. So what they were looking With for. With exception, there was one thing I was missing, but I doubt it's a big deal. So what they were looking for, they now have in their hands. So Correct. The, the next thing we need to hear from is that. Yes. And that way we can start to get out to what we anticipate to be the full body of short term rentals in the community. Great. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, you're going to ask a question? I forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't have been important. Uh, uh, you can come visit me whenever you want. Okay. <laughs> oh, exemptions? Is it on exemptions? No. So, Krista, you want to go ahead? I 
left Lois off the um, agenda, not on purpose. Oh. <laughs> so I'll let this used to happen in high school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I will let Lois go All right. and give her report. I'm sorry, Lois. <laughs> so you had a night off. <laughs> um, bank reconciliations for checking and savings accounts for March should be completed as begun working on April. Uh, they're coming in a little later with the new banking system, so we'll probably hear that every month from now on. Um, I provided the board with the current bank balances. Transfer station invoicing receipts are posted. The monthly revenue for the Justice Court has been received through March. The building department's paper report has been received, as well as the town clerk's audit report. Uh, we have not yet received um, invoices from the controller's office um, for the four audits for January, February, March. So right now, Mike will report on that. It looks like we're in a sort of plus, but we're not. Um, I filed the compliance report um, for the ARPA monies um, that was due on April 30th. Um, our expenditures for the time period from April 1st, 23 to March 31st of 24 um, was $24,900. Um, and again, just to reiterate, um, we need to finish, uh, we need to be in contract by the end of this year. Um, with any other works that we would like to perform. Okay. The roof, whatever. Otherwise, we have to return them. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, a letter to, uh, was sent to Duchess Day, a thank you letter for the $3,500 donation received from the last month. We received the proceeds of the Bridge New York ban. Um, the proceeds were deposited into the capital account comprehensive plan checking account and I want to open up a new bank account to keep that money um, for transparency and yeah, audit. Good um, idea. So yep. I would like to open up a new checking account. Mm -hmm. um, that would be recorded under the H fund, which is the capital fund. Um, and we researched uh, Natalie Health Research, um, a time clock, um, I attached a little pamphlet for mm -hmm. you um, from Time Moto. Um, the cost to purchase the time clock is $399. There would be an additional monthly charge of $16.70 for up to 10 employees. So the annual cost is $200. Um, Seems to be the most reasonable. Uh, um, and they do have the option of using whatever you want, badges, you know, something that looks like a credit card that you swipe, fingerprint in. You can also use your phones, which I thought might be good for um, what we discussed, Mike, at the other meeting uh, on Tuesday. Um, sometimes Claire um, and uh, Michael go um, to properties before they come in because it's on their way. So they wouldn't come in, clock in, and then have to and then go back out to, um, it's an option, might be an option for Danielle because she's going to the toddler program first, Cynthia, so there is that option. Mm -hmm. um, if we're gonna go with this particular time clock, I think I would download the app. It says it's free, I just wanna make sure it's free. Um, but so there is a way of using your phone to clock in and out. And I made the suggestion too for the first two pay periods, we run both models, our current existing model and the new model. In case we discover there's glitches on the new, we still got the, the old to yeah. fall back on. And then we move it when we find out that it's working well. Um, the other thing is, and this even came in discussion. Um, as far as checking in and checking out, they do provide all those options. Um, perhaps maybe two, maybe a fingerprint and a fob or a fingerprint and a card. But I think it needs to be standard with all the employees. Obviously, um, cards and fobs can get lost. The fingerprint, you're not gonna, unless something happens to your fingerprint, you're going to be able to use it. The, um, we tried to, we, I had interviewed Joe to see if he had a need over in his building, hoping that this would be compatible if you had two 
modems in two sites. It would go up the first, but it wouldn't. It would be an additional purchase over there. And he indicated he has a good tracking system right now. And Danielle, the, the uh, recreation department, uh, they don't come into this building, nor do we are able to track all of the people during the summer. So Danielle will continue to use the clock cards. Mm -hmm. At the meeting, it was explained that this is new. Uh, we're within the first six months of the new administration, trying to become a little bit more modern. They've done very well in improving the customer relations at the counter with going with the uh, cube, where you use a credit card to pay bills and so on in there. We've upgraded one of the uh, programs in the bookkeeper's office last year. So this is just another step. And then some of the discussion that occurred, um, I didn't have answers for. Uh, so that's what we're going to discuss in executive session is trying to stay within what the uh, uh, employment rules are and so on. I'm using these kinds of things. But uh, I think this program that they research is, is, is pretty good. Yeah. It needs to be hardwired. So we're going to place it in the main lobby rather than in the clerk's area because the clerk area obviously would be uh, locked if an employee came in early. Um, so it's going to be in the main lobby. Okay. And it is cloud related, computer related, and Lois will have access to it. Right? Yeah, it looks like a nice mm -hmm. piece. And it's compared to some of the other prices, it's very reasonable. Yeah, I guess so. I just had one more um, thought that um, I'm going to start working with Kim, the friend board, the board secretary. Um, we have some escrow money still of, of people, residents that have permits. Um, that are finished and have a little bit of escrow balance that should be refunded to them. So we're going to start working together um, <clears throat> getting those refunds to the residents. Okay. So we do, do we need a motion to purchase this package? Maybe we should so, talk about it. Are you going to talk about it first? Okay. I yeah. think the answer will be yes. <laughs> when, <laughs> when we yes. When we okay. okay. Now, Lois, can you get that practice one before? We purchased. I no. don't know. I think there is a 30 day trial. Oh, there is a 30 day okay, yeah. trial. Joe, if we wanted to discuss it later, could we, or she could, or should we make a motion now to deputize Mike to make the call or to be able to do it once we decide which yes. one? Yes. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. That way you don't have to, right? Because if we're in executive session, can we make that motion? We can make that motion. Once you and come out, you have to come out to make it. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. All right, forget that. All done, Lois. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, Chrissy. Okay, so we are in the process of reconciling our April taxes. Um, we're also um, in the process of handing out fishing licenses. We sent out transfer station permit um, renewal reminders for the resident to the residents as they're um, expired June thirtieth. And I met with Joe Gross from Marshall and Sterling um, regarding our annual reinsurance. Re mm -hmm. We are completely insured, but we just met because this is my yeah, first time doing it. And he gave me a packet that um, I was just wanted one of you guys or all of you to go over just to make sure everything looks the way it's supposed to look. And then we can sign it. And if there's any changes, which he doesn't think there should be, because they're, they're pretty much the same year after year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just wanted to just be super safe my first year doing it. Sure. Um, if anyone wanted to look it over, and if there are any amendments, he could certainly make them with no I'm problem. Glad to look it over Thank you. Yeah. So if this is good, we can sign it and I can scan it over to them yep. and we're good next year. Yep. When's it due? Um, since we are insured, it's not there's, a no, bad, deadline. there's no deadline, right. but probably sooner rather than right. later. Yeah. In case. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it for that's me. It for you. Good. I may. Question, question Gary. Yes, do you right. guys have cyber insurance? Cybersecurity insurance? I, well, I think we do. I think we do. We do. I think so. I think so. Yeah. 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 We, we, I, that that was, I think we I added know. that last year uh, at some cost. Yeah. I recall Mary, that's I'm, part of our conversation around that. I think that. we picked it up, Tim, after we were infiltrated that one year. Okay. Yeah, I think we didn't get, did get it. So can someone get back to what, what your limit is, what you insure to? Uh, I'll go ahead to get back okay, here with it. Chris, you, I think what we'll do is I'll call Joe Gross. Okay. Have him come over. We'll set up a time and have him 
full of the whole policy because there'll okay. be wording in there that I, I know, and there. it's a bit lengthy. And yeah. he said he would be happy to do that. So. Yes, that's what we'll do. Okay, I can call him three four one or if you just well, want. I know Joe. Oh, so okay. I'll, I'll I know everyone call. knows everyone. Knows. Yep. <laughs> That's a good question, though, to ask them about the, the cyber, that security, cyber yeah. security. And, and is there sort of a best practice or or yeah. certain level that you recommend for municipalities of our size? Okay. Well, we're actually going to make the ratio with them of what we are doing to prevent that limits what they'll insure to. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, it's kind of a combination of we need to take action, we need to prove, verify that, and then they can insure to a certain amount. Well, the new IT firm that we just started using this past year, in fact, their security was so high, it was like we were the Pentagon over here, that people couldn't get access to their computers. So we mm -hmm. had to just kind of, you know, um, kind of roll it back a little bit. But um, but that's interesting. And, and we're happy, by the way, to share with you who we're using, you know, if that's helpful well, to you. And um, making sure the users, the employees, are using sufficient security in their Passwords and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, part of what That's they what discovered is that we people, you know, you have to log in from your own computer. Or you can't share path. You know, being mm -hmm. making sure that people aren't. Just what you can do. Yeah, just so, because right. that's where that sharing is. I guess where people okay. can, so can outside can infiltrate. Sure okay, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, Joe. All right. So um, we took care of Colliers, yeah. and then the ZBA report. Um, the last meeting was on the 16th of April, and I could not attend that meeting. Um, however, I did get in touch with um, Frank Rattle and John Parisi and went over um, what happened. So I took uh, notes from that. Um, the board met in executive session prior to the meeting to discuss the ongoing Yard Guard swimming pool application. Okay, so after deliberating, the concerns of the appeal and the concerns from the Cornells and Yadgard attorneys, the board is in favor of the Yadgard application. The opposing attorneys have 30 days to appeal the new decision. The Yadgards can now submit new application uh, at the next meeting. And the other um, application on the docket was uh, Heather Croner's addition, the variance and special use permit was granted. The next meeting is May 21st. Oh, yeah. Great. Okay. Leslie, I'm sorry. Go sure. Ahead. <clears throat> uh, so the planning board met this past Tuesday. There were four items on the agenda. The first was in the Gonzalez application, 3707 room 44, for a special permit. Um, they want to purchase the building and use the upper part as an apartment and the bottom part for training. There were questions from the planning board with regard to parking and screening. Uh, they asked about the neighbor and the neighbor's permission with regard to the parking lot and, and uh, screening with plantings there. Uh, the CAC wrote a letter questioning um, whether um, that kind of apartment and so the commercial and residential piece, whether that that um, violated the square footage formula for Mabbittsville. Uh, the planning board deferred that legal question um, to, to council um, and they're going to discuss it and revisit it at their meeting next month. Uh, the planning board made a motion to refer it to the county for review and they adjourned the public hearing until next month mm -hmm. when they hear back from the county. Uh, the second application was the Hurley application for site plan approval. Um, it was their public hearing for their site plan approval for a screened in porch. Michael Sloan was there to present for the project. The CPA had granted them a variance. Of the, the, it was non-conforming because the house was built in the setbacks but prior um, to the law. Um, so there were no comments from the public on the application. They closed the public hearing and approved the application. Third was the Mulvey application at 247 North Mavitsville Road for site plan approval. They want to put new living spaces above their garage. Uh, the planning board had designated the type two action under Seeker. And it was referred to county. The county did get back to the planning board, responding that it was a matter of local concern. Um, there was a representative here for, for the Mulveys. That they just explained they want to move. Um, they have a bedroom downstairs. They want to move upstairs. So they're 
not increasing the number of bedrooms, simply re relocating a bedroom. Um, that was their public hearing. There was no comments from the public and they made a motion to close the hearing and they approved the application. The fourth matter was a lot line adjustment between Raleigh Farm and uh, Mimis Farm. It's on sort of North Tower Hill Road back in that area. The application was for the purchase of additional acreage. Um, the planning board designated it to take two action under seeker. They just, they have two structures in the property. So they wanted additional five acres to have it be 20 acres so that they're in compliance. Um, the application was approved and the um, planning board waived the, the public hearing on it just to approve the application. So that was the planning board meeting. The CAC uh, met last night. There were two representatives here from the Pusatonic Valley Association to discuss the 10 mile river watershed at the town of Washington sits right in that watershed and the projects that they're working on around the watershed. Um, they wanted to make the town of Washington aware of their work and different funding possibilities and education awareness around it. There were some interesting things and I'll, I'll share the maps with, with all of you um, that they, they distributed. One was around, uh, that I thought was interesting, was around forests. There are, they, they showed which forests within the town of Washington are critical habitats for climate change. And that they said that we, that we or that 50% of those forests should be maintained in order to prevent any kind of climate activity. And I guess this is what they're looking at this, these forests from, there's a corridor that goes from New York State all the way to Vermont. So that was interesting because, you know, they're just, they're some specialized or special types of, I don't know what they're called, they're dense forests that, that are very important to the environment. And we have a lot of them in our town. So that was very interesting. Um, the CAC also discussed the letters that, their final letters uh, that they're submitting to the town board around hospitality overlay. They discussed the planning board's letter. Um, so they didn't agree with the planning board's letter that, that was submitted to the town about the hospitality overlay. Be making some changes and resubmitting their letter to the board for consideration. There was discussion around no mow spring. It wasn't just no mow May, but no mow spring, and a lot of people were not mowing, which is great for for the bees and, and birds and flowers. Um, and the Innisfree Community Day is, Matt, is May 25th. So uh, that's all from the CAC. As you all know, we've been working on this general code project and it's sort of been put on the back burner a bit because of other work that the town has been focused on. Um, but Colin, who's our contact at general code and I have been in contact uh, and Kyle from Vanderwater and Chrissy were also copied on that those emails. I'm going to Joe loop you in on those conversations. But basically, he outlined for me in an email what steps we need to take to adopt the code revisions that their council and Mary Alex worked on to kind of get us kind of cleaning up typos and things that were inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So they've prepared all of that. In addition to that, we had. If you recall, we asked the different town boards, the you know ZBA planning and CAC to give us feedback on parts of the code that are hard to interpret or a little bit stickier or that need clarification or things that are missing. So I asked AKRF months ago to do a memo for us on some of these issues that they're saying that they think are important that we consider. And then Aaron provided, Warner from AKRF provided that memo, and then Vanderwater responded with their legal opinion about AKRF's uh, recommendations. So this is the response so, to this, is yes. that correct? And so I I asked them to do that. That was, okay. um, that was months ago. And just so that we, so some of these, these are policy you know, decisions that the <laughs> town needs to consider and make. Mm -hmm. And so what I'd like to do is just give you all this for food for thought to mm -hmm. to read about one is you know some farm farm worker housing questions our code is more strict than the state's code and so we're not in compliance with the state's code so if someone pushes back on like being required for example to uh, have a special permit which is what how we're usually how we're doing it now for farm worker housing um the state requires just a site plan approval, just, just an example. So, 
you know, we've had incidents in the past couple yeah. of years where people have said, wait a minute, you guys can't make us do that because we're, we're your so the state law supersedes ours. So anyway, you'll see that description in here of those issues and what their recommendations are. There was a question with the, um, gosh, what was the school that we were dealing with for months and months? Upton and months? Lake. Yes, Upton Lake, of how how they were handling mm. parking mm -hmm. and how we how our code it's like do we designate it per seat in the class in the school or per number of um, faculty I can't recall anyway that that's a there's a way to have that be clear and they made a recommendation and that's here in this memo too timber harvesting mm -hmm. you'll recall we don't have anything in the code about that right now mm -hmm. and Jeff Battistoni made a recommendation to us um, that we require site plan approval for that because a lot of municipalities do and we have nothing on the books right now so that there's a recommendation for that in here and then a site plan requirements for special permit uses and telecommunications facilities so what i was hoping you all would do just take this home read it when you get a chance i'll talk to joe we'll go through it and come up with a plan but i just wanted you all to have kind of the background on it and then what the next steps are we have to go through the process to adopt the changes that even that Mary worked through with the general code's in-house counsel to adopt any changes to the code and then to adopt however we want to mm -hmm. move forward with okay. the memos that you have right. in front of you. So more to come on that, but I just wanted to give you the homework and thank you, Chrissy, for making this comment yeah. for me. Um, NRI, we received from the DEC final copies. Um, the town has two copies. That's of the actual summary document itself and uh, and it has smaller versions of the maps um, included in that mike i think you have a copy with you right there so the cac has a copy an official copy the, the planning board the zoning board um and the town has two and we have you know the files we can always make more but you know the, mm -hmm. for the reference for each of those town boards they have their own copies and of course the larger maps we have here on file um, so that's exciting, right? Hold it up, Mike. Hold it up. I should have probably brought it just as a as a uh, show and tell. There, there. It's a it's a very it's a it's a beautiful book. Document. It's it's a it's a great and actually, Mike, thank you for having it and for being here and for all of your work on it. It was a great project working in collaboration with the village and uh, Mike and Jen Glasson did an incredible job and Shanna Ledoux and who was our fourth person from the village that helped. Peter. Peter, 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 exactly. So I'm getting old. It's been a long day. I'm sorry that I forgot Peter. For me. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so you much for, for everything that um, you did with that. It was really, it was a, a lot of work and um, a really great, great final result. So thank you. Um, and thank you to you as well. Wow, well, your hard work. Thank you, Jen. I'm sure we all, we all share that. We all share yep. that. Um, so Margaret and I had a call Margaret Schneibel and I and Pam Scott, who are Climate Smart Communities group, had a call with Cornell. They reached out to us because they are providing uh, assistance to municipalities with actually submitting their paperwork to get bronze certification, which is very helpful because uploading things, and really what they're going to do is look at the documentation that we have to see if we need to supplement it in any way in order to get the points because you almost submit it to a board and they evaluate to see whether or not you fulfilled the criteria to get those points or whatever it is. It could be the composting toilet. It could be whatever. Yeah. So we're meeting with um, Cornell in-house here on uh, Monday, May 20th to just sit down and go through each of those things. We might need documentation from the clerk's office, past minutes, whatever we need. We're going to find out what we do need. I may need to get some stuff from Danielle. In addition to that, they're doing work with municipalities around disaster preparedness, where they're providing um, social media postings already made around like flooding. It's more like a ed public education, community awareness around what to do in a flood or how to you know, check your generator, um, any kind of invasive, spe invasive species like those moths that were out, and they'll provide that to us, and then we can upload it. So Natalie and Chrissy are going to join in on that meeting at some point on Monday the 20th to talk directly with Anna, who's the contact at Cornell, to find out, um, you know, what 
how that's going to roll out, and then she'll just send it to us, and then we can post it. So it's all our neighboring towns are doing, and it's just a great way for us to, and we don't even have to create the content. They're doing it for us, which is great. Um, Do we know how many points we have? We have, for we need 120 for bronze certification. We are definitely at 114. Wow. Um, we think. So that, that compost is going to drive us over the edge <laughs> now. Okay. Going to tip the wow. Kind of All right. There's some stuff that's in progress, and that's the part, like there's 77 or something points that are definitive, and there's 44 about this that okay. we're in progress. And so I think we've completed all those. That's what they're going to help us work through. She's yeah. going to advise us and say, yeah. like, if you just did this, or if you could find paperwork on that, then you could get the points. So we're close. It's, it'll be exciting just to get that done. So anyway, sorry for the long report. Oh, good report. Thank you. Should we mention the hospitality overlay, the seeker, that we did the seeker form all, you know, yeah, last week? Was that last week? Last. We've done a lot of letters yeah, in the past week. We Was that, that last week? Yeah. And uh, we've asked, or coming out of that meeting, if you all recall, Nana's working on part three of mm -hmm. seeker, um, along with Taryn from Jim Stout's office. And we will get a date on the books to review that and then have the final public hearing open to close that public hearing. I think sometime in the next couple of weeks, right. they're just figuring out their schedules. Um, I think it makes sense to have have that document completed. Jim Stout also comes back from, um, he's been away, he comes back today, and so we'll be able to kind of regroup and see where we are. But hopefully the next But NAM weeks. sounds like her schedule is swamped, but they are doing the part three of that. Yes, she's get working back, on the part three. Then we can, you know, you know, let the world know and yes. set a date. Actually, there was a question that she posed that I, I, I put, Chrissy, to you, and the Joe Baby Vanderwater will also know you can figure it out together. Is this the first piece of legislation? This is the second piece of legislation yeah. for 2024, right? Because short-term rental was in 2024. Yes. That's right. There's nothing else that we've Dude. done for, you know, in legis legis so, legislative-wise yeah. in 2024. Okay, so, yes. so then that she, she yeah. just now needs to know that for her. Mm -hmm her workup but she wanted to include it in her write-up so. so oh and general code will also once we've hopefully approved the nri officially we'll post that as part of the code and then all the maps do mm -hmm. that exercise so. are you finished i'm finished are you sure i am finished <laughs> i think so i forgot about i thought hospitality i mean if, you, yeah. if, if i had a no. dollar for every time somebody asked me if there's a public hearing hospitality no, no, there isn't. flying out of here okay. <laughs> So the town board asked us for a position back in the last year, early this year, mm -hmm. and the police board came back and said, concerned only with the fact that the lot at the corner of Halcyon and 343 has an approval for a sewer hookup. We're only going to allow that for a single residence home because we're concerned about that area being constrained or whatever. So that was a position we gave back then. And then you came back and said some changes and like another update to the position. <laughs> and so what we did this time, we looked at the NRI, very bit by one piece of document, and we found in there concerns that we've added to our list and that the, uh, not a lot again, only talking about the corner of house in 343 is in a riparian zone an aquifer underneath it that flows under 343 into that creek along the park and into Thorndale. And that in combination with the fact that that's a flood area coming off of 343, it's a constant maintenance job by DOT to repair the, um, the shoulders or wash out into that area. That, given the limited constraint of that lot, which is about two acres, tells us that the septic system would not be a viable thing for our, our position. Yeah. Um, so based on that, um, the position of the village board will document this to the town board is requested, is that we don't support that lot being included in the hospitality overlay for the, uh, for the town. And again, that's a recommendation, that's a request, we'll document for your request, that's, that's where we're at today. Because they can only get sewer hookup for a single resident. And, and by on, on another side, just for a sewer resident, for a sewer hookup, 
we as a Buddhist board are fed up with, I personally fed up with problems of getting money, getting paid for water and sewer service by residents who are outside the village line. Okay. And I have thousands of dollars, actually, I have Green Bar with over $10,000 they owe us. And I have more than that, about $5,000 of other people that owe us money. And we don't have the wherewithal, given that we're, we're outside of the village to levy their taxes. You know, if you don't pay your water sewer bill in the village, you put a levy on your taxes, you don't pay it, put it over Dutchess County, they reimburse us, they take care of it. We can't do that town for people. town users of our water sewer system. And it's a very frustrating situation for us to be in, which is why we've agreed to allow those that are already pre-approved, but anything other than that, we are not interested in. And it's not because we're short of water or short of capacity, although there's arguments about that. It's just because financially we can't manage the situation. That's why we're just fed up with it. But that's separate from my posi our position of the board regarding. I mean, are you in litigation with those people? No, not yet. Drive? We're having oh. lawyer discussions. Right. That's a separate question. Yeah. So that's just what the board, that's our position. I'll document that. Sure. So, Thank yeah. Um, yeah. Tim, when will you give us that? I'll do it this week. This yeah. week? Yeah. Perfect. Good. Yeah, because yeah. that, yeah, I mean, we, that, that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. Okay. Appreciate yeah. having that. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, okay. Uh, Bob, you go ahead. Well, I was absent last month, so um, I'm catching up. Please excuse me. Yes, thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Certainly. Joe. Thanks, Joe. Sure. We'll be in touch. Well, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Um, the generators were serviced in March, and um, Matt was there, uh, our groundskeeper, to yep. learn about the generators and keep an eye on them. I'm pretty sure he's got the app down now. I think he does, yeah. yeah. So there's an app, uh, which I have on my phone, but he's got it now, which he can just look at from time to time to see if the generator is running at its required test times and things like that, both generators for the highway in here. So, um, and he'll be keeping track of the service and the maintenance on them. Um, I've been working with Matt on the, um, on the roof. We've been talking about it. We're going to try to get together in the next 10 days and get it all down so we can talk about putting it up to bid because um, we have to use that money and get it done um, by December, right? We have to be in contract by December. Right. Yeah. A lot of issues, little little things at Park and Pool with uh, Daniel we're working on. Um, not really about that right okay. now. Good. Good. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, things like the doors are ordered and, yep. you know, a yep. bunch of other things. And Matt's trying to spruce up the property around here. It's going to get rid of the pile out there. So doing a fabulous job. Yeah. yeah. He's got a list of some major things he's working on. Yep. So he really loves his job. Uh, just about not really reminded me also about the windows here in this building. Right. Do you think we should start yeah, we're gonna, with this next budget season, like a capital plan or to be able to replace so many per year. Or That's a good idea. What, what Matt and I are trying to do, we've been talking to a few window guys, mm -hmm. getting ideas of what would work, what right. would look right. okay. Right. Um, so we could still get on nice days, we could still open windows. I mean, you know, these windows are humongous. Yes. And, I, um, they are. Why are people and, smaller uh, back then? I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, well, huge. This building has no kind of designation, correct? It's not considered a state historical no. or historical. Yeah. So that's good. So. That's good. Yeah. That helps with flexibility yeah. on windows and stuff. Well, I don't know about that. Well, no, it helps. When we when we were redoing the eaves, everybody was going crazy because no, 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 I no, used aluminum saying, instead of. Uh, <laughs> it will help it project your cost. That it would. Because if it's yes. under a certain designation, yes. right. literally you can't go outside that designation. So one of the things we have to uh, probably chat about, and I will be glad to take anybody's input, if we should reduce the size of the windows and somehow try to figure out how they would look on the outside or what we could put on the outside to reduce the size because they're so big. 
You could bring uh, in an architect that would so get advice on that. Do you remember me saying to you, um, tops and windows? Yes. Did you call them? Not yet. Okay. No. They are very good at giving you ideas of what right. to do. That they they will they they could give right. ideas. It was already had uh, Carl Schmeling yeah. from Kelly Goss because he's a town but resident. But does he give you ideas on how to? Hobson's would do that. Yeah. yeah. Hobson did the voice all of us. Yeah. They're very. Yeah. I'm telling you. Right. I know that. Yeah. yeah. They're in Rhinebeck. I know exactly yeah. where they are. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they'll give you ideas on how to without, maintain the integrity of the outside. Work. Exactly. Yeah. Without going to an architect, they'll they yeah. do that. All right. Uh, town court, uh, as was reported by the uh, bookkeeper, did submit their financial statement. Uh, in March, the court deposited three thousand one hundred thirty-one dollars, which brings the total for the year to date fourteen thousand three hundred thirty-three. Uh, we have not heard back from the state on what the allocation of those dollars are between the state, the county, and the village. So that we usually work several months behind that. Mm -hmm. So by next month, we'll be able to say what occurred in January or perhaps February. Um, I reached out to the to the uh, judge, Judge Paul, mm -hmm. which gave me two days next week uh, where she could meet with uh, members of the board. Uh, I had indicated to her that we're, we're into the fifth year of, of, of her term. And at six months, we usually review how things are going. So she'd be glad to sit with um, one or two of us or more, mm -hmm. um, either next Wednesday or Thursday. I would prefer Thursday. I can um, meet you Thursday. Um, anyone else that wishes to, just let me know, and I'll get back to her tomorrow morning. Um, and I not only told her, we wanted to talk about how it's going, the ups and the downs, but also uh, just informing her about the revenue and expense for the court and uh, the projected budgeting that needs to take place as we move forward because she is new to the position. And she got back to me right away on that. So that, that was good. Um, recreation facilities research. I met with the rec director of the town of Fishkill to ask uh, several questions. One in particular was how are they constructing their pickleball courts. They have a number of them dispersed throughout the town. Uh, and he said they're using the same company that um, Wappinger used. And the name of the company is, he's local, which is great. <laughs> the company is called Craftco, C-R-A-F-C-O. So I will give the gentleman a call, ask him to come out and do a walkthrough with us. Danielle will be part of that. Matt will be part of that. Bobby probably because he oversees grounds. Just to get an idea of are we thinking of correct site and what would be projected cost. Dovetailing with that, because some of the people we are looking to help us give a vision of that park are back in town like Skip Safari. Bobby and I are going to try and get those people together within the next two weeks, do a walkthrough, look at what immediately needs to be repaired, what needs to be repaired over the next couple of years and maybe a long range plan. As we've been discussing that, particularly when we got the email on the failure of the leach field and the pumping system up, up there. As a board, and I've already reached out to, uh, to uh, our county legislator to give us an idea. We need to figure out a way of starting to build up some revenue funds like other communities do in fixed funds that are designated for improvement on recreation and on building. Um, some do a as build or a new build supplement on what that costs. Right now we do that, but we have $14,000 in that fund. Um, off the top of my head, we're talking probably six figures of expenses up there right now. It would be great to do what Stanford did, which was raise dollars and then fix their playground. But from experience, <coughs> Once you get the donations, you've got to maintain that over years, and donations will not continue to follow in. So we've got to figure out a way of and starting to fund these didn't things. Didn't we, years ago, um, do something with, like, new construction That's through it. the planning New board. build, you get a you get a. But there would be, like, a recreational recreation, surcharge. And that's what we have collected. And right now, there's only $14,000. We do there. have that on the books now. We have that on the books. Right. But because of the down of the economy and no real, a lot of new build. Only $14,000. Well, we should, we is, should make sure that's being used. 
Um, well, not just being used, but uh, being funded. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. yeah. How to get it bigger? How is it just for a new builder? I thought it was if somebody subdivided. Well, I think that's it's probably that, that's the right. best right. right. So we need to look at the legislature for that. And Deidre was going to help me research. She thinks that just like when we talked about a surcharge on short-term rentals on top of the counties, you have to go through the legislature, including the New York legislature, to get approval to do that. But there may be some other avenues that we can follow to start to, so that everyone shares in. And what has happened up in Mabbittsville is nobody's fault. It's just, it's getting old and, yeah. and it needs to be yeah. refreshed. Yeah. The Stanford um, project, you know, that was a separate entity. 501C3, right? Because right. the, I guess I didn't realize that town boards cannot fundraise. Correct. Correct. So they, and actually it was a group of residents that went to the board and said that they wanted to do it. Right. But they had a big, they had a big bill the past couple of weeks. Mm. The community showed up with the hammers really and saws great. and they did really the park. Really it turned out yeah, nice. And the park looks beautiful. Right. But Lois, how, how do we, for that 14,000, do we have that like in a, where do we hold the money? Is it in like a high yield savings account or could um, we put it in a high yield savings? It's just in a savings account with the local bank. Yeah, it gets Nothing. I, I don't even know what the percentage is. Years and years ago, we, we had several funds, members. Those high yield savings accounts, which we can get, that they just they can pound Compound. interest. We could actually make you know, if it's sitting there for a while, make make money. Um, Put in the stock market. And there is also um, a New York class, which we've discussed right. in the past, right. which is for local governments, and it pools your money, um, and you get a much higher interest. Like a pooled rate. income fund. And it's, you know, state secure way of... of um, it might make sense for certain things like that, or we really... Do, we, it's a real rainy day. Like emergency Like things. they're dormant. Yeah. And, you know. Like the collapse of the system yeah. out there last week. You know, um, can I ask you a quick question just in, in dovetail to that, Mike? Do we keep track of the usage of the park? Like... How yeah, many people come in and um, the lifeboats do? Do they? Do we have an idea of uh, how many people last are years in the facilities? We can go back. And I think it's important this okay. year that maybe we compile um, a, a good number of how many people use the park and pool up there. Um, I mean, when when I was a kid, you, you couldn't even get in there. I mean, it was wall wall people, and in in the you know, the picnic areas, the swimming pool was packed, but and even on real hot days, I mean, there's a good number of people, but not that many. Right. So long term, you know, one of our biggest expenses is uh, operating that lake as a pool is expensive. The pump is running, there's big pumps are running all the time. The, uh, the chlorine is, the bill is, is, is it? Yeah. How much? Twenty thousand. Yeah, it's a it's a big it's a big number to keep that thing clean, and along with you know trying to figure out some money, maybe long term we create a Olympic size swimming pool inside that pool and figure out how to fill the rest of it in, which that would be know, a vision. Which that would a would vision. Have to give us a yeah, and that would you know if if it was big enough, I mean. You know, look at the, uh, I was looking at uh, Jonathan's report, and he's had, I think there's four swimming pools on the, that people are putting in. So more and more people have their own swimming pools, and they don't go to the to the local park. And um, the other so thing, just I, a, it's, yeah. it's just a, you know. A, the other thing I addressed with the fish guild director, and he was the fourth recreation department I've spoken with, mm -hmm. the security of the parks. And how do they keep their parks open and how do they close them? No park right now that I've spoken with closes a gate and keeps people out. They do have a sunrise to sunset signs. Mm -hmm. They do close gates after sunrise and uh, uh, after sunset and they're closed until sunrise. Some of them have electronic gates that are programmed to open, but the entire day is open to the public like Say somebody wanted to go up and play chess with a partner and go up on one of the picnic tables up in the middle of the pavilion and play chess, not swim, play basketball, you know, play pickleball, 
Um, one place told me the only thing they lock up that's gated in is the dog park. And what happens is they get their dog licenses, they get a fob, which allows them to open the gate. There's cameras so that they know who's cleaning up after their pets and so on, but everything else is open. So that's another thing as we move forward with the vision of that, addressing access, how we keep access to that park for the public. If we're going to invest dollars, you can't just have it closed from nine to three. You can't lock it after three. Um, and also, none of them had water, but some places I've been researching, the law allows if the fencing around the water is locked and secured with cameras, then the rest of the park is, is secure. None of them have people checking people coming in and out from sunrise to sunset. Very similar to what we do with Tribigar. That's a sunrise to sunset. Um, so those are the kinds of things that I'm getting answers on, and we'll come back with a formal report right. to you. Okay. Um, we already addressed my conversation with Peter Doro on the uh, hourly rate on the virtual ethics committee. Um, we're going to be speaking with other towns to see how they do their ethics education throughout the year, not just their annual update to everyone in January like we do with sec uh, sexual harassment and so on. Um, I'm going to speak to a couple of town supervisors. Pam would like to do more education rather than on top of just the annual one. So I'll get back to her on that. And then the time clock we already presented and we'll talk about more about that in executive session. So that's it. You reminded me of something when you said the ethics uh, training. You know, we get these emails and like, you know, ZBA training or planning training to get your, your credits. Right. And I emailed Mary and I said, because, you know, are we supposed to be doing sort of continuing education for the for who do we do we need to do it and i don't think election officials don't but the planning board does and the zoning board does so we need to figure out with can't we need to just figure out how we whether we make sure that they're getting those opportunities mm. are they how are we tracking it all that stuff and i think there's a couple other departments the assessor's office has to do it she, she told me which ones let me see, Chrissy, what, I'm going to find it right now. But anyway, just to throw that on our to-do list that we just need to be, you just reminded me of it, um, training credit, here we go. Four hours for PBA and ZBA. Uh, she's not sure, but maybe for the justice, the assessor, and BI. What does BI stand for? Building Business inspector. Building inspector. Okay. So actually, the building inspector I know does because um, – James would go to those trainings and he went to one for us on uh, like environmental practices and we got credit for that for the uh, CSC points. So anyway, just we'll, we need to figure out a way that we're tracking that and that we're letting them know about opportunities, planning, zoning, and board. Okay. Um, before we go to executive session, does anybody else have anything You'd like to talk to us about, Tim? So on the... Uh, the village board went through the budget for the uh, our fiscal year, June 1st to May 31st. You participated in the review of the fire and rescue. Mm -hmm. right? and I documented to you what the requirements would be for, for town to pay the village come next February, March for your portion mm -hmm. of the fire rescue. I assumed in there that that would include the continuation of the contract with NDP for an additional 2.5%. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. right? the fact is the contract that we had with uh, NDP was for five years, ended actually this year. I was able to get them to agree to do an initial year. So we're covering that rate through May 31st of 2025. However, we have to renegotiate the contract. Right? And so as I said to you today, mm -hmm. I'm very worried about what the new contract is going to look like. And I need to work with the town board to get into negotiations with whoever we decide to choose or what the next contract will be. And that will affect the amount of money that the village as well as the town will contribute towards keeping that service going. You said you've heard some rumblings that it might double. It could double, yes. I've heard other municipalities that are going for first-time contracts paying for like twice that. Now, the, the contract is a function of how much activity they have because, of course, they make money based on the number of calls they make. Mm. Right? Conversely, mm. if it's quiet, they have to charge municipality more to actually be there. Right. Okay. So I have no idea 
I've heard numbers that bad. It could be a serious yeah. uh, impact. Yeah, it's a pretty scary that, thought. As part of your planning board, or yep. your budget review at the end of this year, yeah. we need to get our contract in place so we know what the number is. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, Tim, Tim, do they do they give you any accounting for how many calls they go on? Yeah, we do a monthly review of that at our board meeting. Yes. Okay. They actually separate out how much is NDP versus volunteer. Gotcha. Yeah. Tim, Gary mentioned that the county is, is talking about a county-wide program, or is that uh, just speculation? They're, they're talking. No, they're I talking. just don't they're think we can talk about it. They're talking about it, yeah. but they have not set any projected date they want but, to implement that. Right. By the way, the next are you going to the next yeah. meeting? in June. June 17th yeah. or 18th, whatever. So they have a review of it, but Mike, I just don't think it's going to be something we can put Yeah. When do you no. start negotiating for the. I'm going to wait a few months, but I don't want to wait too much longer. I'm going to think May, about yeah. like, uh, September. September. Yeah. And that'll start for the 25. That'll be for June 1st, 2025. 25. Onward. Onward. Okay. But for us, we need it for our budget purposes. For yeah, you need to know what that bill's going to be. Right. Okay. I'll say is that memo I sent you to say here's how much we're yep. looking for you to pay. We'll be upset by it. Yep. Yep. Renegotiation. Okay. Okay. Very good. Anybody else have anything? Um, yeah. We're here for a government class. We just need a signature that we will be. Well, certainly. <laughs> yeah. that? I didn't hear Absolutely. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, you got some questions. I didn't hear what you said. She's at her government class. She needs a signature that she showed up. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Absolutely. Which government class is this for? Um, this is for Pine Plain. Pine Plain. Sure. Okay. Good Get for the you. supervisor to sign it for you. <laughs> and you came all the way from Pine Plains? Lucky you get those very quiet meetings. <laughs> and not too long. You know, right. but, no, but you it was the eight hour one. Yeah. <laughs> eight hour one. So, is there any, Tim? I, I, yeah. Maybe I asked Matthew this, but is there competition? For NDP, like, is there anybody else? Yeah, there's in person. There's, um, but they've always been the high. So NDP was significantly lower than. Uh, Thank you very significant. much. Significant. Okay. Is it worth? Oh yeah. I want to check it, all of them out. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Yeah. I'm just afraid of the answers. We got to do it. You know, just Gary, before you go in, the gentleman that had been here for the library kind of informed us that we left. Are you representing the library also? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the treasurer of the library. Could you, so we can get it into the record, the library is going to be? Yeah, I'm uh, Mark Bula, I'm the treasurer of the public library, and um, our board has already voted on uh, uh, proceeding with the uh, plan for a full 14 um, to increase our budget. Uh, we've already voted to approve a uh, tax cap override um, our tax cap has nothing to do with uh, your tax cap yeah. or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, so we're still like in the planning and education phase of it, and we're going to be doing our petitions. Um, one of our representatives on our 414 committee has uh, talked to Christine about when she would like the petitions received so that she could, and then we'll when she scrubs the list to make sure they're all town residents and everything like that, then we've offered to deliver them to the Dutchess County Board of Elections. And that would occur in November? Uh, June. June. Yeah, they have a June. Board of Elections has a deadline like the very end of July or beginning of August. Yeah, I have a specific date, but we want to give, we're going to have our petition done. By sometime it June. June 6th. Yeah, we'll, and then we're going to have a deal. Time to that. And the resolution would appear in November? Yes, it would be in the November election oh, period. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you, well, thank thank you, you. for coming. I appreciate that. No okay. So, Howard, you know what's next? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Executive session? Yes. yes. Thanks a lot. I know. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you.
we need, Mike, do we need Lois or Natalie here for this no. discussion? No. no. Appreciate this, Okay. Thank you, ladies.